Hello and welcome to Impact Africa, our online program where we get to celebrate and have conversations with diverse people and organizations who are impacting lives and communities positively. In addition, we use the program to highlight and celebrate events, places and positive news. My name is Dr. Kemi Akiode Adebayo, known as Dr. Mama K. And in today's program, we continue to celebrate Men's Month in November. This is our part two edition. So yes, I am going to let you get a snippet, you know, of the conversation I had with two intelligent and reliable and humble young men. Yes, everybody on our program is young, trust me. So they are Mr. Mustafa, Akuzu, who is the business owner of Fast and Fixed Service Technology based in Cape Town and from hi, yeah, French country. And he can speak 13 languages, this young man. The title of our conversation was called Focus on Positivity because this is what Mr. Mustafa is about, focusing on positive through what life has shown him and he, what he has experienced. And as well, the other young person we're going to share the snippet of the conversation we've had with is Mr. Wakfik Whistle um, Geldinghurst, who is the Chief Operation Officer, COO for Robert Sobukwe Nursing Academy based in Cape Town. If you don't know about them, you need to find out more. We'll be sharing the details at the end of the program. And the title of the full-length conversation we had was called Uplifting Community because this is what Robert Sobokwe Nursing Academy is all about uplifting the community. So the first conversation with Mr. Mustafa, I was asking him about, yes, what he values most in life. What are the three things that he values most in life? Because that is important, you know, just to know of some of our people, our young people and our men. So that you learn, you know, as well for, for yourself. Enjoy. So for you, what are, what are the three things that you value most in life? What are the three things that you value most in life? The three things which I value most in the life, the first one, I can say it's a family. That is the first thing. Okay. I value the family. And the second thing I value my work is because my works make me who I am today. That's money, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> money. Okay. And I can say kids. Hmm. I value kids a lot. Do you have children yourself? Yes, I do. Okay, all right. I do have. So I'm sure you're a proud father. Actually, I really, I, when I wake up in the morning, I see them, I'll be like, oh man, I'm, I'm happy. So for you, family, work, and, and kids, children. Yeah. Okay, kids. So now, what, what motivates you? Like you just said, when you wake up in the morning, you're proud of your children. So what else motivates you to say, you know what? This is what keeps me going, no matter what. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. What keeps you going? What keeps me going with what uh, I'm doing, it's, I can, first of all, I'm motivated myself because okay. I know that uh, I came in the, in the family which we are poor. Yeah, so you need anything you have to do, you need to earn it. You can't get mm. anything without earning it. And that's how our dad raised us. It's like, yeah, guys, it's not that you see something, you can only get it like that. You have to work so you can get it. I remember when I went back home there, if I didn't do so, like some dishes in the house, I will get punished. I will be like, you're not going to get something because you need to work to get. So what's really motivated me to do this because i know like i won't get anything to anybody if i don't work for it right. so i need to work hard to get what i want and uh, i have to use my brain to get what i want in a good way not in right. a bad way also i know you speak so many languages and you're called, people like you are called polyglot i don't even know how you do it even me speaking one language you know my language and english sometimes i'm like you know but i learn different phrases from other languages but you can speak fluently modern land languages including swahili french 
um, English, obviously, and a lot of other, you know, uh, five other or six other languages. How, you know, how did you get into that? And do you normally, how do you, how do you do it? I don't even know. I don't know how to ask you that. Uh, actually, what I can say, everything can happen like a, everything I have is, is by the grace of God. Because okay. everyone always tell me, yo, Mustafa, you are lucky. I'm like, no, I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. <laughs> because everything I do and everything I touch and everything is just by, grace of, uh, by the grace of God. So speaking many languages, I've never been in India, but I can speak in It's just uh, grace of God. I have this memory which you can capture the stuff very mm. quick. Like if you say something, I won't forget it. It's, it's gonna stay in my mind, wow. like uh, staying in my mind long, long time ago. I remember when I came in South Africa, the English which I knew is like a yes and no, don't touch that all. But luckily, I stay with my aunties. Is uh, I stay in my auntie's house with my cousins. Then from there, I saw how they are speaking. Like uh, like a one day, I wish also I could speak English like them. I didn't I get a chance. You. I, I didn't get really chance to go to school you? then. Right. I had to pick it up then. Now wow. I can speak English, so it's wow. only my grace of God, so I can speak that language. Okay, say 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 some whatever language you want to say. Say like, uh, like, Udu, like, maybe say something in, in well Swahili. Like I can say Jambo Abarigani Mkwazima Naitwa Mustafa. That is like a hi, how are you? Are you guys are you guys good? I'm Chris, I'm Mustafa. Okay, like so it. if you want to say that in what other language, would you? Like, yeah, I can say, that, say like, that. I can say in any of the language okay. which I understand. I just want someone to speak the word. Mm. And I'm like, I oh, know, man, I know this language. I know wow. how to reply. Then okay. I'll be like, okay. Then other words will come and the other words will come. Then uh, I'll end up just to know, like, yeah, man, I can speak it. So no one can. Interesting. Can. <laughs> so th now let me go on to this question about success. To different people, success means various things. For you, what do you, what does success mean to you? What when they say, "Oh, Mustafa is successful," "Oh, doing well," what does success mean to you? On my own side, and it was one day I was thinking about that question. To be honest, I was asking myself, "What is success?" And I just get the answer on myself. I don't know if the answer will be right, but. There's no Let right or wrong. To say, you, yes, to you. One thing I can say to the world today, they never be a successful person. They okay. never be a successful person. And they never be a success. Because if you say about success, then if I'm successful, that means I'm not gonna have time again to look for more. Hmm. Then I'll be like, yeah, I'm done. Right. But I can say like they always be an achievement. Hmm. Instead of using the word successful, be like I have an achievement because even if I have today ten dollars, I will need to have twenty dollars. I will need to have thirty dollars. So, success to me is only God can give success. Right, I like, like that. from achievement, it came from hard working and smart working. Right, not only hard working because but there's a smart more working. smart working. Wow, amazing young man. So yes, thank you, Mr. Mustafa. You value your family, you value your work because obviously, yes, that's what has made you into what you are today. And lastly, your children, kudos to them. And I agree with you. Those are three things that one should not joke with. Okay, our second segment, which is with Mr. Wafik, who is the CEO of the Robert Sobokwe Nursing Academy. I was asking him about life growing up and his education, if he could share. Enjoy. So tell us life growing up, you know, for you. And then in terms of your education, just share briefly. Uh, I grew up in the old South Africa, hmm. born in 1973. Um, through the grace of God and through the grace of Allah, I made a half a century, guys, so <laughs> everything is possible in this life, if you look after yourself. Um, I grew up in a strict uh, Christian family, uh, grew up Dutch Reform. We, we were 
like guided in a certain direction with our religion um, matriculated 1991 okay. uh, joined the military uh, from there I went into the private sector right uh, after I finished my military service uh, unfortunately my career in the private sector was shortened um, on an age of 33 when I suffered mm. uh, a major heart attack oh really and um, wow. I had to make a choice hmm. money which yeah. goes part of the career hmm. or I or my health and I choose my health above at the age of 33 at the age of 33 mama okay. Wow. Uh, I choose my health and I was sitting at home thinking what am I going to do with my life um, in that same year um, I had about three more heart attacks and, and I thought by myself I had to start relaxing I need to focus and hmm. start doing something differently and I started an organization those years um, on the Cape Flats, Mitchell's Plain, okay. uh, by the organization named Cape Learning Foundation. Okay. Um, and I started empowering our previously disadvantaged communities with affordable skills training. My first training program that I ever gave in my life, I started at Town Center Library. <laughs> Um, and that was computer training. Hmm. Uh, learn the people of Mitchell's playing the basics of computer. Where hmm. do you switch it on? <laughs> Where do you switch it off? Uh, just to skill them. Hmm. And it grew from there. It grew until where I'm standing today, today. offering healthcare courses and um, ETDP approved uh, hmm. training programs um, within a stack of time from 2008 to uh, 2023 okay. that we are currently okay. in. What okay. a journey. I'm just fascinated. I'm looking at you and I'm thinking what you just said, you know, that, that journey of here yeah, converting from a strict, you know, Christian family converted to Islam out of love and then, you know, working at a 33 heart attack and three more heart attack and then making that choice and putting mm. back you know in the community no wonder for me i'm thinking you're in the health sector so tell us about what you do at the academy just briefly okay i'm the chief operations officer um my duty is like any chief operations officer is to manage the business right. um in normal circumstances, a COO manages the business and he makes sure that businesses are run according to hmm. the quality management system. Uh, but Mama K, would you believe me if I tell you my primary focus that I believe my sole, sole responsibility is, is uplifting our communities. Hmm. Uh, yes, I might be a director of the Robert Sabukwe Nursing Academy, but I love working in a community. I'm not a person that is office bound. I actually <laughs> hate it to sit in an office. Um, I'm more than happy to be in the field, no matter where the training is. Um, I mean, uh, we've got training sessions running in Robertson. Uh, we had training sessions before in Sirius. We do Hermanus, Hans so you're not just in Cape Town, not but just in got Cape campuses Town. All yes, over we've Cape got Town. fixed campuses that's okay. been established in right. the Western Cape. Okay. Um, if I may, um, our main campus is in Vasco Gurut. Okay. We've got a nice campus in Kailicha. Uh, we've got a campus in the Helderberg, which is Strand. Oh. Um, and then um, We've got the satellite campus, uh, won't say it's a campus, it's mm. a satellite office here with, in collaboration with No Stop here in Cryfontaine. Which is an in initiative that I believe is very much needed. Definitely, definitely. Mm. Um, we had similar initiatives mm. in Makassar as well. Right. Um, we've got in Beaufort West a campus, uh, we've got in the Northern Cape, Uppington oh. a campus. 
uh, we've got two campuses in Utenaik, one in Utenaik mm. and one in um, uh, King Williamstown. Um, and we also have one in KZN and we have a campus as well as in the Free State. Wow, so that you're really all over South Africa, more That's or less. That's correct. Um, in terms of what COVID showed all of us, especially for those who provide education, you know, um, with e-learning, is that something that you do at your academy? Yes, we are fully, um, we have a fully functional e-learning okay. platform that is being approved by all the relevant CETAs, QCTO as well, um, and it's also um, DHET approved uh, and compatible. Um, we offer face-to-face -face training, uh, we offer e-learning, right. we, we have blended training, okay. which is most now part facial mm. and part online and part practical and all that. Right. Um, our main focus is to ensure that we have the best of the best out there in South Africa. Well so how affordable are your courses? Um, we look at a market, if we look at the market, we don't look at the market of how much are we going to make. Mm. Um, whether you, to, to answer Mama K's question now in that sense, um, let me put it to Mama K the way I'm going to put it now, is I am charging the exact same fee that I'm charging in collaboration with a community project that we're running in Kraafontein. I'm charging right through South Africa. In other words, whether you study at our main campus, mm. whether you're studying in Kailicha, whether you're studying in Strand, you're going to pay exactly the same fee. Um, our prices are in such a way that it is affordable for mm. each and every one. Right, you really need to listen to the full on conversation with Mr. Wafik for you to get more grips, you know, about life growing up for him. The fact that he grew up, you know, in a strict Christian family home, had military training, joined the private sector. And at the age of 33, he had three, three heart attacks at a very young age. So he had to make a choice between choosing money or his health. And he decided to choose a tale. But like I said, you need to listen to the full conversation. Anyway, that's all we've got for you today. We'll be sharing the details of both businesses at the end. But this for me is just telling us that yes, we need as men, men are known to not focus on their health because of the stigma, before because of the culture we live in, that men are supposed to be. Oh, so yes, please look after your health. We keep shouting that. Look after your health. Go for checks, especially if you're over 40. There's a lot of checks you have to go for that, yes, we women normally do every year for mammogram to smear test, you know, and so on. There's a version for men that need to go into. So to prevent things like prostate cancer and so on later on. So we celebrate our two men for the work they're doing through their businesses and organizations in terms of putting back and loving the community and their dedication to solving problems like what Mr. Mustafa is doing with his business. He's solving phone problems, technology problems, laptop problems, and at very affordable rates. So please support them, go to their website, just support them in whatever way, let people know about them, and we can wait to celebrate more of our men. We salute you, we honor you, and we're grateful for you. I'm afraid that's what we got time for today. And this is me, Dr. Mama K, signing off saying, stay safe, stay blessed, love you all.